Hi, this is Janet at the West End Library in Laurelton, Pennsylvania, and this is Book Review. This month I want to talk about a great author, lots of fun things that happen in her books, Janet Ivanovich. I'm going to start with One for the Money, the first one in a series of books um, that she has her protagonist, Stephanie Plum. Out of work, bills to be paid, selling off belongings to pay bills and keep up with expenses, going to her parents' home to eat meals due to not being able to afford groceries and do her laundry, and she owns a car that drinks oil. Doesn't this bring back memories of when you were first starting out in the working world? Meet Stephanie Plum, an out-of-work lingerie salesperson who needs a job desperately. So, on the advice of her family, she looks up her uncle, Vinny Plum, who has a bail bond business and is in need of someone to bring in those who have skipped bail. Due to one of Vin Vinny's top bail bondsmen being out for surgery, Stephanie enters the world of being a skip tracer. Never having had to find bad guys, never owning a gun or firing one, and entering a world of not so good people. Stephanie's first case is to bring in a Trenton, New Jersey policeman that has skipped bail and is wanted for murder. The policeman and Stephanie <clears throat> have a history from 10 years ago and had grown up in basically the same neighborhood. Stephanie didn't really want to get involved with her sleazy uncle Vinny's bail bonds business, but the biggest drawing card for this case is that the amount Stephanie would make by bringing policeman Joe Morelli in would be $10,000. Her thoughts run to the bills she could pay off, food in her refrigerator, and the hunky cop, Joe Morelli, with whom she shares a past. One study in Stephanie's life is her pet hamster, Rex. Her dys dysfunctional family is the other steady diet in De Stephanie's life. Stephanie is able to go to her parents' house for dinner where her mother tries to hook her up with guys who Stephanie has no interest in whatsoever, spends most of her day ironing and being a closet drinker, when her stress level is elevated. Her father drives a taxi cab as his retirement job, and when not driving taxi, sit and watches TV all day and makes incoherent groans in response to situations and questions. And then there's Grandma Mazer, who also lives in the family home, adds her own colorful situations to the household. Grandma Mazer's biggest thrill is to go to the funeral homes to not only see how good the deceased is dressed, but to see how many and who are all in attendance, see and be seen, but also for the free eats. With no experience, it is recommended that Stephanie get in touch with the other lead skip tracer that works for Uncle Vinny. Enter Ranger, a gorgeous Cuban-American former special services guy who in addition to finding bail fugitives, also has his own security business. So gun in her purse, bullets lying loose in the bottom of the purse, and a can of defense spray, Stephanie sets out on the beginnings of learning the bail bonds trade. To try to Joe, draw Joe out so she can turn him in for the $10,000, Stephanie commandeers Joe's vehicle, driving it all over thinking when he comes to collect his vehicle, she can overtake him mainly with the defense spray. But with bombs going off, being physically assaulted, meeting a hooker by the name of Lula, Lula is just a part of a normal day for Stephanie. Lula works across the street from one of the suspects involved in Joe Morelli's murder case, which adds to the colorful character. Stephanie deals with not one, but two good-looking guys, Joe and Ranger, who begin to vie for protecting Stephanie and Ranger, who is able to provide her with really awesome cars. In One for the Money, Stephanie finds herself chasing someone in just their pants and bare feet, dealing with a drunk who very easily goes with her to the police station to be held until their hearing would take place, to tracking down a possible witness to the murder that Joe Morelli is being charged with. As Stephanie delves into the murder more, she begins to realize that Joe is innocent and attempts to help him find those that can get him released from the charges. It's finding those people that put Stephanie in the most danger. The bail bondsman who had been in the hospital for surgery that Stephanie was taking the place of is released and in response to Stephanie's commandeering Joe's vehicle tries the same trick. However, this time it was not successful because the original skip tracer is blown up in Joe's vehicle. Realizing the bomb was meant for her, Stephanie now becomes a bit more accepting of Joe's acts of protection. 
revolving around the drug business in Trenton, a psycho up-and-coming boxer, and finding mis missing witnesses in freezers, the evidence against Joe Morelli's murder charge turns into eventually freeing him of charges. As you get to know this cast of characters, and they are characters, especially Grandma Mazur, it makes one wish for some of the excitement in one's own life like that which surrounds Stephanie's life. Threats, people disappearing, and having to depend on being rescued all the time, as well as her family's antics, makes for a fun, fast-paced, enjoyable read with a lead character that we all can identify with and laugh at. Janet Ivanovich has 26 books in the Stephanie Plum series, as well as other series with heroes in their own elements. If you want an entertaining read that you can enjoy anywhere, take the time to acquaint yourself with the Stephanie Plum series of books. I have read all 26 in the series with Stephanie. Each one is a lot of fun and I have found not one of them to be repetitious. One of the best characters is Grandma Mazur, who upon discussing her with others who have read the books, we agree we'd all love to have her be part of our family. She is definitely a hoot. Follow Stephanie through the series of books as she brings people to justice, wavers back and forth between Joe and Ranger, Grandma Mazur's ever-evolving character who brings us to laughter with her antics.